Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna do something that I don't do very often on this channel and that is a book haul. I went on a trip to Ottawa this past weekend, visited some friends there. Every time my partner and I go, we bring the rain. Sorry Ottawa for the rainy weekend you just experienced. It is entirely our fault for visiting your city. So because it was raining, uh, we did a lot of like tootling around in little coffee shops and used bookstores. My partner and I went to one. It was Book Bazaar. If you're in the Ottawa area and you're looking for sheet music, they had a ton of sheet music. I would say not quite as much of like the popular things that you might be looking for. Like their Stephen King selection was piddly, their Terry Pratchett section was piddly, but again, those are probably things that like barely sit on their shelves, if at all. While I was there, I picked up The We Free Men by Terry Pratchett. So in a recent patron exclusive question and answer video in which I talked about uh, my thoughts on the legalization of marijuana, how I handle stress, I answered what other large fantasy series I wanted to tackle. Teaser for that, one of them is The Discworld by Terry Pratchett. So if you wanna check out that patron exclusive question and Answer, you want early access to my content, you want to join the Red Rum Book Club, a Stephen King reading club that will start when I hit the goal of 50 patrons. We're getting close! <laughs> we're getting close. I think we're about 13 people away. The link to that will be in the cards and as always in the description box down below and I would love for you to join me there. Uh, but the point being that uh, every time I go into a used bookstore I pick up Terry Pratchett's in anticipation of reading the Discworld. That was from Book Bazaar in Ottawa, uh, and that is on Bank Street. If you are in the area, happen to be traveling through, one of the days was really rainy, and we went to Black Squirrel, which I believe is down near the football stadium. I'm not sure where in Ottawa it is specifically, but Black Squirrel is this like, really aggressively hipster coffee shop that I'm assuming the food and beverages keep the bookstore open. So the front half of Black Squirrel is a coffee shop and the back half of the bookstore is like the stacks. So there's less stuff but I feel like it's more curated. So they had quite a large fantasy and canlit section. They had a really disorganized uh, children's and YA section that just drove me bananas as a bookseller because I've been trying to not buy books, period. I haven't been in a used bookstore all that often since I started at Indigo and now like the book subcategories from the publishers are just in my head and like I'm picking through the shelves and I'm going like <laughs> it won't touch your things but I can't because I'm sure there's a method to their madness and if I touched it it would totally fuck them up and they'd never be able to find the book. My long-winded point being that I picked up two books from Black Squirrel, A Hat Full of Sky by Terry Pratchett with it which is another Discworld novel. I believe both of these are part of the Tiffany Aching series. The We Free Men is about trouble on the aching farm nightmare spreading down from the hills and Tiffany Aching's little brother has been stolen away. To get him back, Tiffany has a weapon, a frying pan, her granny's magic book, and the Knack Mac Fecal, the We Free Men, the fightin' thieving tiny blue skin pixies who were thrown out of fairyland for being drunk and disorderly. A Hatful of Sky is witch in training Tiffany Aiken hadn't expected magic to involve chores and ill-tempered nanny goats. But as Tiffany pursues her calling, a sinister monster pursues Tiffany and neither Mistress Weatherwax, the greatest witch in the world, nor the six-inch high wee free men, the greatest thieves in the world, can defeat it. When the monster strikes, Tiffany will have to save herself if she can be saved at all. I think my friend Megan said that there were maybe four or five Tiffany Aiken books, not an expert, but it would be easier to consume these if I was intimidated by the whole series. But the goal is in the long run to read the whole series. So there's that. And then I picked up Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. The Vampire Chronicles, this I believe is book one. Another one of the things that I was asked about in my patron Q&A is horror to read beyond Stephen King or if you like Stephen King and one of my failures that I can admit to is that I haven't really explored women who write horror and so that is something that I want to rectify this 
year as I start to research for a secret project for the month of October. Part of that involved picking up a woman who is well known for writing horror, which is Anne Rice. Do we have a plot synopsis? Nope. Okay, so I'm gonna go based on the title. I assume there are vampires involved. There is some sort of interview. Dialogue with the vampires. When I got back from Ottawa. I'd done a little bit of cleaning before I left for Ottawa and I had this like box, this building box of stuff to donate. And so I decided yesterday to run some errands and we took this box of stuff to the charity shop. And uh, of course they give you a 20% off coupon and I wandered around inside because when you get rid of stuff, I got rid of a lot of things you're allowed to look. And I picked up a couple of books as well because I have no self-control, what can I say? And so I picked up book two in the Vampire Chronicles and book three in the Vampire Chronicles, which are the follow-up to the book that I picked up in Ottawa as part of this endeavor to read more horror by women. Um, I also picked up two books by R.L. Stein because I don't think I ever read Goosebumps as a child. I read the Bailey School Kids, which are like early readers, six to eight sort of stuff. I never got into Goosebumps, which is middle grade, nine to 12. As I'm in used bookstores, I am looking to pick up some Goosebumps books. I'm interested in horror for children. So I picked up Say Cheese and Die. Greg thinks there is something wrong with the old camera he and his friends found. The photographs keep turning out wrong. Very wrong. Like the snapshot Greg took of his father's new car that shows it totaled. And then Greg's father is in a nasty wreck. But Greg's friends don't believe him. Shari even makes Greg bring the camera to her birthday party and take her picture. Only Shari's not in the photograph when it develops. Is Shari about to be taken out of the picture permanently? Who is going to take the next fall for the evil camera? Reader beware, you're in for a scare. And I know that this is going to be kind of like silly and age appropriate, but I also kind of want to see this because I didn't experience it. I went from, I think just on my journey as a reader, like when I was the appropriate age range for middle grade, I was reading above my reading level and jumped from like Bailey School Kids to Stephen King. Ah, uh, which is maybe not the correct way to do it. Don't know if I would advocate that path for your own children if you have small humans that you're trying to indoctrinate to eventually be constant readers. Not sure I would recommend that path. I'm curious now on this like chunk of books that I missed. So I'm looking for them in used bookstores. The other thing that I picked up is Blind Date by R.L. Stein. This to me sounds like maybe that borderline between middle grade and YA. I'm honestly not sure. The reason for this is the content on the back is having me lean more towards young adult than middle grade. And so this says, she's special, wicked special. Carrie's had a very bad year, but now his luck has finally changed. He's got a blind date with a girl who sounds really hot. He can't wait. He knows this girl is going to be really different. And Carrie's right, because his blind date really is the girl of his dreams, or maybe his worst nightmares. Just the idea that somebody is dating makes me feel like this is more YA than middle grade, but we shall see. The last thing that I picked up while I was at the charity shop that is, of course, Stephen King. And I picked up Rose Matter by Stephen King. This is a hardback that I got charged $1.79 for because the cashier was uh, super flustered. <laughs> it was supposed to be $5.99. I felt really bad for her, actually. Her manager was a bit of a butthole. So like, I'm trying to be like extra nice to her. And she's like ringing the things and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And so she charged me for this thing and like I, paid for it. I'm like, okay, the line's built up, like not going to question anything, like whatever. And it wasn't until I was looking at my receipt once I was home that I was like, oh, she charged me a dollar seventy nine for the hardback. Aroused by a single drop of blood on the bedsheet, Rosie Daniels wakes from 14 years of a nightmare marriage and suddenly takes flight. She uses her husband's ATM card to buy a bus ticket, determined to lose herself in a place where Norman won't find her. She'll worry about the rest later. Alone in a strange city, she begins to make a new life and good things start to happen. Meeting Bill Steiner is one, and finding a junk shop painting is another. It might be bad art, but it's perfect for her new apartment, and somehow it seems to want her as much as she wants it. 
Still, it's hard for Rosie not to keep looking over her shoulder, and with good reason. Her husband is a cop with the instincts of a predator. He is very good at finding people. The fact that he's losing his mind might even be an advantage. Rose maddened and on the rampage, Norman Daniels becomes the force, a force of relentless terror and savageness, a man almost mythic in his monstrosity. For Rosie to survive, for her to have a chance in her brave new world, she must enter her own myth, a world that lies beyond the surface of a work of art and become the woman she never knew she could be. Rose Matter. It sounds kind of bonkers, but it's on my list of things to read eventually in my lifetime, and I got it for a bargain, so I don't regret any of these choices, even though I'm not supposed to be buying new books. Uh, so that is my little book haul. Now, to atone for the sins of buying these books, I am heading to the used bookstore later today with two bags full of books, and uh, I am going to be unloading some stuff. I'm joking. I'm not joking. I'm joking. That's where I'm at. Let me know your thoughts on these books in the comments down below. Also, recommend me Women Who Write Horror. I looked up Women Who Write Horror and I got a list of authors and a lot of the books on this list are horrific general fiction or horrific literary fiction. Uh, it seems that women don't get put in the genre horror category, which I think is interesting. Thank you, patrons, for making videos like this possible. I really appreciate the work that you are enabling me to do. I am so excited to hit the goal of 50 patrons and start reading Stephen King with all of you. For those of you who are interested in becoming a patron, there are perks. Voting on my TBR, early access to content, your name in the credits, some patron exclusive content like the book club. Now on the screen are some other things that you might enjoy, other content that you might enjoy from me. Uh, I'm trying to get more legit, be a real YouTuber. Oh yeah, I was supposed to give you a call to action. Like and subscribe if you made it to the end screen. <laughs> Bye.